I got some kind of virus in my computer. Every time I try to click on something, it always takes me to some crazy wacko place. <laughs> uh, Revel that's Acts. Let's go to Revelation. What it's going to do it again? You watch this. It's as crazy as I'll get out. We'll do, it won't take long. Revelation. Let's try. Are the church ages in chapter two or chapter three, Donna? Where we get to that seventh church age? Um. Um, I don't know Chapter what you call three. it, church age. Right? Philadelphia. Okay, let's see. Well, actually, Smyrna is chapter two, but Philadelphia is chapter three. All right. Later, C is one I'm thinking of because that's the one you're here. Well, we that's go. In three here also. We go. Right. Chapter three. All right. This is interesting. I know thy works, you're neither cold nor hot. I would you were that you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich, increased with goods, and have need of nothing. And knowest not that you are wretched and miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Now, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to really go back and look at this deeply now. Because the part about the nakedness, this really gets my attention. And I'll tell you why. When you go back and we look at um when we look at the um let me get all you guys up here with me so we can talk about it. When we were looking at Genesis and Adam realizes he's naked, he eats of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He's told not to do it. He does it anyway. And then he realized he was naked. Before he was naked, he was blind to his nakedness. Okay. But he realizes he's naked, and when he does, he freaks out about it. You know, initially we read that he was naked, both of them, and they were not ashamed. To me, they were blind to their nakedness. And when they ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, their eyes, we know, come open, and then they realize that they're naked. Now, I did that message over on Patreon, and I really still held back a lot in that message. But what I was really wanting to convey in there, when you look at Genesis 1, when God first creates Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve are not created as two different beings. They're created as one being. When Adam is on the ground, or we go to Genesis 2, some, some scholars, they, there's actually a big debate over this. You get one group of scholars that'll think, what, what do I think about that? Then you got another group that says, no, Genesis 2 is just a recount, but goes into more detail of Genesis chapter 1. But I don't think so. But there again, it's just a thought. I can't say I'm right on it. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm examining this because my thought is this. Why, if Adam is created in the image of God, would he be ashamed of being created in the image of God suddenly? That's what part doesn't make sense to me. If you look at the way he's created in Genesis 1, it's not to say that he's not tangible, but I believe that if he's truly in the image of God, he's more of what we would see scripturally, the way God appears, like he appears to Moses, etc., uh, we have other places, like or an angel might come down, for example. You always see this presence of light. And so I believe that he was clothed in the glory of God himself, and Adam and Eve were one being at that time. So the reason why I'm bringing this out, what you just said there, and we're looking at Laodicea, they're blind and naked, and they don't know it, that's really a reference back to Genesis, if you think about it. And I really want to look into that deeper now. That's really got my, I get really curious about stuff like this. I mean, this I'll have fun with this one for days. Uh, but it's almost as if it's a reversal. You know, 
Adam wakes up, realizes he's naked. He's got his eyesight back. But the Laodicea church, she's become blind and doesn't even know it anymore. Right. And now she's naked. She's, it's almost as if what the scripture is saying, she's in the state that Adam was before his eyes come open. Now, some people say, well, it was a horrible thing that he did. Well, by the way, when they ate of that tree, he lost. He lost. that. He, or, uh, let me put it this way. I, I don't think that Adam actually lost the spirit of God himself, but he forfeited the right for the children, uh, his children, to ever to partake of the tree of life. And so people will say, well, he never partook of the tree of life. Sure he did. How do you know he partook of the tree of life? I'll show it to you. I've, I've, I've said it before, and you guys probably know it, so I'm probably just preaching to the choir when I do this. But just for giggles and laughing as a reminder, if you go back to Genesis and we go to chapter, what is it, chapter 2, I guess? Um, yeah, chapter two, right? <laughs> the breath of life, right here. The word breath is nishmat, and then the word life, chayim. That's what's breathed in his nostrils. That's right where we have right here, ve'ipak, be'pa'av. He breathes into his nostrils uh, the breath of chayim. Right, and I did this in purple recently because I was trying to teach that before again. And let me find here it is right there. I should put this in purple too. Do, 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 do. There we go, and this one in purple. All right. Now notice, and then this one in purple. You see, guys, you can see. Are y'all able to see that? Okay, just say yes because I. No, can't. we're seeing you right now, Steve. You're only seeing me. How boring is that? Thank you, Elizabeth. How did I manage to mess that up? Okay. All right. Now you can see it. Boy, seeing the top of my head, that's a horrible sight. Okay. Breath of life, right? Right here. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna highlight this for you here in, in blue. Ipak bepaav nishmat, and then the purple is chayim. That's the word life. Plural form, right? The tree of life is eights right here. The letter in front of it is just a definite article. That letter, hey, is a definite article, which means the life. All right? It doesn't change anything else. It just means the life. Okay? So if, if we see that God breathed into his nostrils, Chaim, then what does that tell you? The tree of life is God himself. Right. Or Jesus Christ, as we would say. Just like when Jesus breathed on the apostles after his resurrection, what did he do? He said, receive ye the Holy Spirit. Yes. Okay. Same thing happened there. It's the exact same word, just like you have in English. It is the word life. See, you have it there, life. And you have here, life. So if it's life in both cases, then you know when it says, oh, you get on there, they put the angels there to guard the way of the tree of life unless man puts forth his hand and eat of the tree and, and live forever. He's not talking about Adam and Eve. They've already got it. Right. What it was, was they didn't want mankind to partake of the tree of life in a fallen state. That's where the problem comes in. And this is why Christ had to come for redemption. So now we're looking at this. Boy, Donna, you really, you stirred something up in me, girl. Good. We look at this <laughs> revelation thing, right? And I'm sitting there looking at that, right? He's poor, he's blind, he's and he's naked. It's clearly God is referencing us right back to Genesis again. And in a way, well, you know, here's the thing. Do you guys realize that the tree of knowledge of good and evil is actually the law? 
It's not a bad thing. It's just what happened. The reason why God didn't want them eating of the tree of knowledge of good and evil is because you're putting yourself under a new covenant. They were putting themselves under the covenant of the law. And you couldn't you couldn't make it by the covenant of the law. If they had stayed with the tree of life, there, there would have been no problems. But they put themselves under the law by going to that. And, and I forget now where it was, but I actually found in one of the documents that I read where it talked about, and I was sure it was, but then I found in one, I don't know if it was in the Dead Sea Scrolls or where I was reading at one day, and I found out the tree of knowledge of good and evil was the law. And, but, but regardless, the only thing that that did is, of course, you know, he does recognize that he's naked. But it wasn't the fact that he, the, okay, the nakedness, yeah, he's ashamed because why? Boy, this is where it really gets in deep. And this is where it's hard to know whether or not people are able to handle this type of understanding. But the reality is going into a body of flesh was not necessarily the best thing on the planet. When Adam was created in Genesis 1, that was perfection. That was perfection. That's why when you read uh, in Philip's writing that they found that book of Philip, he made a statement. And had he not made this statement, I would have never understood why Genesis says, if a man leaves his father and his mother and cleaves to his wife, they too shall become one flesh. And I actually, no, I actually got that revelation before I got this one from where Philip, Philip makes a statement. He says, if he said, when, when, Eve came out of Adam, he said, death set into the human race. He said, if the woman ever enters back into her husband, death will cease to exist. And in a way, that sounds kind of weird. Well, I thought God took Eve out so Adam wouldn't be lonely. Okay, well, there's nothing wrong with that. Sure, that's true. But Philip noticed something too. And it's deeper than the physical Adam and Eve. And that's what we're, that's what we're not, that's what a lot of times people are not catching. It's deeper than that. You see, because what it is, is Adam and Eve, that's perfectly fine. God made him a helpmate so that he would not be lonely. But it's actually speaking of Christ. And that's that's where it gets, that's where you get into the depth of that. Is that when we enter in, see, that goes back to Genesis. And I'll just take you back to that real quick so we can see that. Um, wait a minute, let me think of where that's at. Um, but when we enter back into Christ, oh goodness, where was that at? Uh, I have lost my train of thought on that. Uh, let me let me look at Genesis one real quick because for some reason in my mind that's where that's at. Oh, okay. I remember what I was looking for now. That's where uh, where God. See, I think it's when he first creates Adam and Eve. Yeah, okay, here we go, right here. So he said, let, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air. Now, if you'll notice, they this is when God created Adam and Eve, they are one there. They're given co-rulership. Everything is in the plural. So this is not even a separation, right? And God created man in his own image, and in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. They are just one. Uh, okay, no, it is in chapter two what I was thinking about, though. So let me go back. I remember now what I'm looking for. It's almost at the end. Here we go. Yeah, right here. Uh, now he says here, and the man said, this is now bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh, and she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. That's literally, that's like, that's like bringing us back to where we were. You get it? I mean, that's, when he's saying they shall be one flesh, he first shows that he takes Eve out. 
he makes the two. And then one day I'm reading that, I'm going, oh my goodness, that's a prophecy of Jesus Christ and his bride. And that's literally kind of goes along with what we were talking about today. We're talking about the rest, right? When you enter into his rest and see what is it? When we've entered into Christ, we've entered into his rest. That's whether you are, that's even if we didn't die, if you're in Christ, you've already entered into his rest. You've already become one with him and death ceases to reign over your mortal being. And that's exactly what we have in Genesis right there. And now that Donna has done stirred the pot up for me, <laughs> she's going to have me thinking for days on this. Uh, I really want to look at that because it's almost as if what Jesus is saying about the Laodiceans there is that they've returned to the fallen state, if that were to make sense, because that's really what happens, you know, after the separation. Okay, that's all right. But the fall comes into place because he doesn't just say that they're naked and they're blind, but they're poor and they're miserable and they're wretched. You know, oh. so they got a double or triple whammy, you know, and so I find that fascinating. Anyway, it, all right, Donna, you have a hand up, so I will take this question here and any questions you guys might have and then we'll close out for tonight. But thank